Hi, thanks for joining me today. You know, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people walking around town that may have one of those black shoes on their foot, you know, with the toes that are open, straps across it. Why do they wear that? Many times it's because they may have a diabetic foot ulceration. I remember we talked about an ulceration being an opening in the skin, but what can cause that? What, what are the risk factors? Why do people with diabetes get that? Well, there's two main things that really add to forming a diabetic foot ulcer. The first one and the most important one in the fact of the etiology, the why it forms, is because of neuropathy. So what's neuropathy? Neuropathy is a lack of sensation in the foot. There are people that you could take a nail, stick it through their foot, and they don't even feel it. Many times, when you have neuropathy, you come to my office and you say, my feet feel like pins and needles. I feel like I have socks on all the time, even though I don't have it. I have these sensations like electrical shocks going down my feet. And I have diabetes. And many times that tells me that what you're experiencing is diabetic neuropathy, this lack of sensation in your feet. And what happens with neuropathy is you have an increased pressure on the bottom of your foot. If you took a person like me, with same size, same weight, same statue, and you took another person with diabetes and neuropathy and measured the pressure under our feet, you would see that that person with diabetes and neuropathy has increased pressure on the bottom of their foot. So that increased pressure can cause the skin to start to form callus. And then that callus breaks down further and starts to form an ulceration, an opening in your foot. What are some of the risk factors for non-healing? Well, circulation plays a major role. If you smoke, for example, what happens in a patient that smokes? The vessels in the upper leg, the big vessels, the aorta, the femorals, the big vessels up in the leg are clogged by the smoking. With people with diabetes, the smaller vessels, the smaller arteries below the knee are the ones that are affected. So if you smoke and you have diabetes, you can imagine that you're affecting the whole limb, your whole leg by smoking and having diabetes and poor circulation. The poor circulation, I'd like to tell you about that using the analogy of a plant without water. If you don't water your plants at home, what happens to those plants? They die. Same thing happens here. If we don't bring the blood, which has its, the nutrients and all the stuff we need to heal that wound to that ulceration, it won't heal. So if you have poor circulation, and how do you know if you have poor circulation? One, you have your hair on the top of your foot is gone. You have no hair. Two, your feet can swell. Three, the color of your foot's not that red pink color that we normally see. It may be white, kind of a dingy gray sometimes color. Those are all indications that you may not have enough circulation. When you touch the pulp of your toe and it gets white and then gets pink, that's what we want to see right away. But when you touch it and it gets white and then the pink doesn't come back for about five seconds, that could be an indication that you have poor circulation. And so those are the two major risk factors, what I like to call intrinsic risk factors in your foot and your body that can cause you not to heal. We're gonna talk about some other ex extrinsic re uh, risk factors, things that are away from your body, outside of your body, that can cause you also not to heal foot ulcerations. We'll see you next time.